In today's tutorial I'm going to challenge you further by making this yes yes shawl. This is a comprehensive shawl tutorial and this shawl is a little bit more challenging than the rest of shawls we've seen online and this shawl requires more concentration, a lot less conversation but when you see the final look of it you're going to flip out and your friends will too. So let's get started. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to work on the Yes Yes Shawl Together, a pattern by Vicki Howell. Now today we're going to be working on this and the reason why I chose it is that it has a diagram that's attached to the pattern. So you can read all of these words here or you can just check with yourself and see if you can follow the diagram. This is a great opportunity to do so. Now we taught this on the Crochet Cruises uh, in February of 2015 and a lot of the cruisers when they were going to use this pattern end up using the diagram because it's a lot more easier to follow than a lot of the written word. We're not saying it's wrong. We're just saying that it's easier to visualize it as a diagram. So here I have the, the shawl ready to go. I'm going to show you pointers on getting started and tips on how to read this diagram because once you get beyond a certain level. It's just a repeat pattern and you'll notice that it will grow on its own. So let's begin to decipher this for you and you can again read the words if you want but I'm going to concentrate on the diagram because I think it's easier to follow the diagram on this particular concept than it is to follow the written word. The diagram is really the roadmap to success when it comes to crocheting this shawl. Now what do you notice about this? Do you see that this is like a spray? Okay, a crochet spray of fan work and then all of a sudden you see a gap and then you see two fans and then all of a sudden you see three. So this is showing you that it's a repeat pattern. So this is why this crochet diagram is not showing the entire shawl because once you see the concept repeating itself you can really be able to function really quite nicely. But here's the thing. Do you see this gapping space right here in this line and this one here and this one here? These are the lines to dictate how your afghan is or how your shawl is gonna grow because this is going to provide you the spaces that you need in order to make more fans in the future. So as you repeat the pattern even though you cannot see anything going beyond this if you're following the same instructions that you had been on here you can see that it's repeating as we go. So the biggest thing about this one is getting started and once we get started then the repeat pattern begins to show and it becomes really easy to read. But I'm gonna give you some further tips that we talked about on the ship because if you can see what's going on here you're going to see that it's less complicated than it may look. Now while I was on the ship I described this particular shawl as having some sprays or fan work and a ladder and I noticed that in the beginning right in the center here is that it looks like there's a ladder. Jacob's ladder could be and basically this ladder is dictating what happens on the right is happening on the left. So it becomes like a mirror image to what is happening on either side. So once you figure out what is going on on one side you just have to repeat it in the opposite going on the other and it becomes very easy to follow once you get that concept. But here's the thing. I found with myself is that I get confused on where this ladder is because once this starts getting bigger and bigger you can actually start making an error that this gapping space could actually be this. So it's just really easy to be able to tell. So I have my sample here in the background and you can see that there's the ladder going up. So basically I can see that this is the center point and you can see that the sprays are on one side or the other and it just makes it for a very easy uh, way to be able to follow along. So what's happening on one side is happening on the other. What we're also going to be working with, with with this particular pattern is that we're going to be working with some uh, back or front posts and the front posts provide a really spray kind of a look to it so it makes it really three dimensional at the same time. So you can either follow the written instructions and follow the chain counts or you can literally just grab your magnifying glass or just your glasses and just be able to follow along these steps that you can see here. And here's the secret. The secret is eight. See the, all these double crochets here? There's eight. See all these ones right here? There's eight. See these ones here? There's eight. So the question is is that you start off with eight and then the next group of eight there's one chain in the middle and then the next group is that there's still eight but then there's two chains. The secret is is to really watch this area right at the ladder because some, some things are just not the same when you're coming into this particular area. So we're gonna be focusing on that today and I'm gonna get started right now. 
So I'm going to get started. I'm going to use burnout super value as my demonstration but you will should know that the original that shows up in the beginning of this tutorial is that done with glam stripes. I use four balls of that. I'm going to use this material because it's a little bit easier to read or easier to see on camera. You also I'm going to use a five millimeter size H. I also used a five millimeter size H for the glam stripes even though the pattern calls for something a little bit smaller. So just uh, you can flex around you know change the yarn to match the hook whatever you would like to do. So let's uh, begin. We are going going to start off with a slip knot and this is going to go relatively easily. I'm gonna take my time because I love this shawl. So I have my diagram now ready on the side and somebody asked me how do you follow those without getting lost? Use a highlighter or a pen or a pencil. <laughs> it's pretty fundamental. Here we go. We're going to start off and we're going to chain 12. Remember the one on the hook doesn't count as one. So let's do 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So this if you look at the diagram is part of the base and it's part of the turnaround as it's going around. So you just have to kind of visualize that. So what we want to do is that we want to count back to the ninth chain. So 1, so just starting underneath the hook. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 and right in the ninth you want to double crochet. Very good. So now what we're going to do is that this is part of the ladder. This is part of that very middle section right here and what we want to do is chain two. So in the ladder we're always going to chain two no matter what it is. We're then going to double crochet into the final chain but if you look at the instructions it shows that you're gonna skip over two anyway and the final one is the is the third one over anyway. So that just as a helpful tip. So there you go. But we're not quite done. We have to get to the other side. So this is the ladder. So this is one side. So there is a mirror on the other side. So what we have to do then is that we have to chain four. So one, two, three and four and what we want to do is that we want to do a treble okay right into the very starting chain right here. So we're gonna wrap twice and going into there and we're going to finish that off. So the reason why we did a treble and not a chain all the way back around like we had over here is that we need to start off at this particular point. So we have to start off on the outside as this is the sprays. So this is what it would look like at this point. It looks like a, a ladder going across but this is the ladder going in the middle and I'm going to probably mark this with a stitch marker so that it's easier for me to see. So if you want to do that too I'd recommend it. So when I come back I'll have that done. Moving up to row number two I want to turn my work first. So this is where I was. I put in my stitch marker so I know where it is and I want to begin. So to start we have to chain three and that counts as a double crochet in the rules of crochet. So one, two and three. So what we're going to do at this point is that we're going to put eight double crochets into this entire gapping space here. This is that chain four gap space. So we're going to put eight double crochets. So let's count those out together. So one and we have two we have three, we have four, we have five, six, seven and eight. Very good. So we now have eight in that space. So we had one right in the beginning that was part of this chain. So there's one. We have eight then in this gap but here's the ladder right in the middle. So in this particular row what we have to do is that we have to put a double crochet into the same double crochet from the one below to keep that ladder going up. That happens on every particular row for this. Okay and then we chain two. So there's always a chain two gapping space in the middle of the ladder and then we just double crochet the other side of the other double crochet to keep that ladder going up like so and then you put in eight over here. So what are you gonna put over here? You're going to put eight but there's a trick once we get our eight done. So let's do these. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. But here. So now you have your eight over here and you have your one standing alone. So the final one that goes in here you have all your eight. So the final one goes into the fifth chain. So we have to make sure one, two, three, four and 
five. Just pull it tight if you need to do it. The one, two, three, four, and five. Go into the fifth chain for your double crochet. So you actually put it right into the chain to be able to maintain that on the outside. So this is what it looks like at this point. Okay, so now we're ready for round number three. Let's begin round number three. We're going to turn our work and round number three is really simple as well but this time round number three we want to start off in chain five. Why are we doing that? Well if I told you in the very beginning if we're following this pattern and basically the eight double crochets are here now the next level up is that there's still eight but then there's one single crochet or one chain in between each. So therefore we have to compensate for that. So we have to be able to chain five. So one, two, three, four and five and then what we're going to do is then in every double crochet for this remaining of the eight we're going to put one double crochet and chain one and we wanna do that for the entire ones that are inside that that uh, gapping space that you see below. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that when you get to the ladder that's when the game plan changes just slightly. Okay, and we're chaining one in between each. Okay, and see how I've marked us in the middle? So I can keep a really good eye on where that is. You can get confused really easily on this one on where your center point is. So you go all the way to the, to the last one. Okay, but you make sure you chain one first and then what you have to do is just make sure you just count. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that matches. So you had eight below and you now have eight. You have your last one in followed by a chain one and now you're going to put one on top of the other one that's in the ladder. So a double crochet on top of a double crochet. And then how many are in between the ladder? It's two. So one and two and then the other side of the ladder you're going to put in double crochet and then start by chaining one and then one double crochet into each of the eight followed by a chain one. We did the, as I'm doing this, we did this on the ship and a lot of people they like to gossip and talk and a lot of them were just having struggling with the concept of this. Uh, a lot of them were not familiar with reading diagrams either so that became a challenge. But once people got onto the diagram and understood it, it becomes a lot easier. So once we get our eight in, I just want to double count. So remember that this latter one does not count as one of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then I have the last one here. So we have a chain one and then just double crochet into the last one that's part of that there. And that's what it looks like at this point. So you can see it's really starting to come together. So let's move along to round number four. Okay, let's turn our work and let's move up to row number four. Row number four is when the game plan slightly changes and this is where we have to be careful. So we're going to start off and we're going to chain four. So one, two, th two, three, and four and we're going to go into the first uh, gapping space here. Okay, so we're now gonna play in the gapping spaces. We're not gonna play in these double crochets. So we're just going to double crochet into a gap space there. It's a chain one gap space and then we're going to chain two, one and two and then keep doing another one into the next gap space that you run into. So you're going in between and then chain two and chain two and chain two and chain two Okay, and chain two. And this is the row that really throws people for a loop because you've started a little bit earlier by putting it into the first gap space. So we still only want eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. But it looks, but look, you have your ladder still here. Okay, so on this one, particular one, we don't put anything in the chain one gap space that's prior to the ladder. We leave it out. But what we still have to do though is that we still have to chain two and then just go right into the top of the ladder. So double crochet into the top of the ladder. So just watch for that one because we have started into the gap space here and it's slightly earlier than what these eights are. That means that you will not do the one that's right prior to it. So we're in the top of the ladder for a double crochet, chain two, 
and then double crochet into the next top of the ladder on the other side and we're going to repeat the same thing. So we're going to chain two and we're going to skip this first gap. Why? Because we skipped it over here. So we just wanna make sure that everything balances and we go to the second chain one gap followed by a chain two and then keep doing that all the way to the other side. So this is consisting of doing one set of fans. So as this gets bigger that this instruction becomes more and more um, spaces in between everything as it as there's more fans to working into it if that makes any sense. <laughs> I'm not even sure but uh, this is just one fan out of many that you will be creating throughout this entire tutorial or a particular project. So I think I only have seven at this point so I'm gonna check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How did I know that? Well I still had a chain one gap space here so I just wanted to verify that I was right. So we do it there and on this side only for this particular one is that when we get back over here what we want to do is just chain one only not two and then we just want to go into the third chain up to finish that one up like that. So that's what it looks like at this point and that is row number four. So this is when the game plan changes. We're going to start then creating the gap space so that we can make more room for fans coming out later on in this particular shell. Let's move up to row number five. In row number five this is when we start creating the gapping spaces that you can uh, we'll be able to see. So to start off with this one we're going to be chaining ten and you're gonna think this is kind of weird but just stick with it and trust me. So we're gonna chain ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. So now this time what you want to do is you can see that these gapping spaces this is a chain one gap space this is chain two. We want to do a half double crochet into the second one that's over just like so. So we skip that first one and half double crochet into the next and then what we want to do is chain six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and what we want to do is skip another gapping space and go to the second one over for another half double crochet. And then chain six again. One, two, three, four, five and six skipping one going to the second chain two gap space for a half double crochet and chain six. One, two, three, four, five and six. Okay skip another one just go to the second one over and basically we have to chain six one more time. So one, two, three, four, five and six and this time see the ladder that's right in the center. We wanna follow that ladder up and that's where we're going to double crochet. So we've been half double crocheting into the gapping spaces here but on here we still maintain and put a double crochet in. So basically you end up with these gapping spaces just like you see they're, they're pretty big and if you've done your math right there should be five. One, two, three, four, five. So we're in the ladder so remember the ladder we're going to be putting in a, sorry I think I did a, a half double crochet there. So I wanna do a double crochet there and then chain two and then double crochet onto the other side of the ladder. So let's begin to do this again. So we're going to chain six, one, two, three, four, five and six and we're going to skip the first one and go to the second gap space for half double crochet and do six. One, two, three, four, five and six. Again skip the next one, go to the second over and then chain uh, six. One, two, three, four, five and six. Again skip the next one, go to the second over for half double crochet and again six. One, two, three, four, five and six and again we're going to skip this next one go to the second over for half double crochet and then we're going to chain six one last time. So one, two, three, four, five and six but this time what you have to do for this particular one is that you have to go and do on the third one up you have to do uh, a treble. So wrapping twice and the third chain to complete that one. Why did we have to do that? Because the simple fact is that we chained 
10 to start with. So it creates an extra big gap here and we needed to do the same on this side. So let's move on to the next row where we're gonna start now creating more fans that will fill in the spaces and you're gonna start seeing the repeat pattern showing up. So let's turn our work and we're going to start more fan spaces but this time we're going to start creating this fan that you see here but it's gonna start creating two of them within this with a particular uh, row. So this is the repeat pattern that we're going to be working with from now on. So we're going to start off and we're going to chain three. So one, two and three and we're going to start off in the first gapping space and how many are we gonna do? We're going to do eight double crochets. So let's do that. So this is two, three, this is four, five, six, seven and eight. Okay, so once you have that done, you just simply just lean over to the next gapping space and just plop a half double crochet there. And that pulls that over just like you see. Do you see that? So now we're going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then half double crochet into the next one, the next gapping space. So we've got to wrap first. And then we're going to chain six again. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then we're gonna half double crochet into this gapping space. So what we're doing here on this particular one is that we've gone from five gapping spaces on the row below and this time we're only gonna be left with two. Okay, so we're eliminating two on both sides. So once we have this done, this is the final one before the ladder and in this particular one we're going to put eight double crochets here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. And to finish this off we need to put one double crochet into the top of the ladder. So on the first side of the ladder See how this is consistent going all the way up and then we're chain two as we skip over the middle of the ladder and then double crochet into the other side. So basically what we've done here is that we've created more sprays to work with here and here and we're leaving this gapping spaces because see how this one gets much bigger? This, this uh, spray and this one is going to expand into each other as we go. So let's uh, begin to do this side and we're gonna start off and doing eight double crochets into the first uh, gapping space. So this says two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and remember what we did on the other side once you had your eight we go into the next gapping space and just finalize it with a half double crochet and then we chain six. One, two, three, three, four, five and six. Okay, half double crochet into the next gapping space and do six one more time. One, two, three, four, five and six coming into the next gapping space for a half double crochet because we're only gonna end up with two of gapping spaces in between the fans. So you have just one more gapping space left and guess what? That's where your eight are going to be. So we have one, two and three, that's one we kept because that's three and then we have four we have five, six, seven and eight and on there what we have to do is that the fourth one up so one, two, three and four will get a double crochet. So that stabilizes that chain. Okay, so we had your eight in there plus the one for the outside. So basically now you, we have both sides of the shawl and basically you have your ladder in the middle. You've got new sprays starting to happen and now the next time we're gonna get bigger and more of these gapping spaces are going to start disappearing. So watch how I do that. Let's turn our work and move up to row number seven. Row number seven we're gonna start off by chaining four. So we're gonna go one, 
two, three, and four. And we're going to double crochet into the next double crochet followed by a chain one. And we're gonna do that for each one of these eight that are in this particular spray. So chain one and then come into the next double crochet and then chain one. So keep doing that. The secret is, is to watch and make sure you get your eight in whenever you do this. The eight matters. So we keep doing that. Okay, and I'm just looking for the ladder, but the ladder is way over here, so I shouldn't be looking for that ladder yet, so that's false advice. <laughs> But I still do wanna make sure I keep my counts. So I just wanna make sure I'm doing this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then once we have our eight in there, all we have to do then is, is that we have to chain one. And then we're going to, in the first gapping space, we're going to put in a half double crochet followed by a chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we come to the next gapping space in half double crochet. So what we're doing here in this particular one is that the five from way down here became two and now it only becomes one. So you see how the sprays kind of run into this one. We're gonna do the same on the other side. So all we just have to do before we start that is that we have to chain one first and then half double crochet into the first one of the eight. Sorry, double crochet into the first one of the eight and then chain one and then keep going for your eight like that. So double crochet, chain one into each and now we're heading close to the ladder so we're gonna be watching for that in just a moment. Okay, so I wanna just kinda keep count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and I still have one more to go and then chain one and then the ladder is next. You can see the ladder is running down, right down the middle and we're going to put in a double crochet there followed by a chain two because that's the middle of the ladder and then the other side of the ladder. Okay, so to repeat this pattern once again we chain one. So we're gonna come down the other side so you can see that these have just gotten bigger. Okay, so we're coming down the other side and we're gonna start on the first double crochet that's available to you in double crochet chain one and keep doing that for those eight. So the next part of this tutorial in the next round is when we start doing the front post or the back, I think it's the front post at this point and this is what makes it give it the texture which is very desirable within this particular pattern. Okay, so I just wanna keep count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and chain one and do my final which is eight. Okay, chain one and then half double into the gapping space. Chain six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then coming to the other one for half double. Okay, and chain one first and then we begin these eight. So we just start off with just one double crochet, chain one. Keep doing those for those eight. So you're thinking to yourself, how do I read the pattern so quickly? This pattern is very easy to remember once you grasp it and once you grasp it then you can put the pattern away and be able to finish on your own without it. It's just a matter of understanding that repeat pattern that is available to you. Uh, the biggest uh, hang up for me was that ladder right in the middle. Sometimes I just got a little too carried away and just forgot and I overlooked it. So what I'm going to do then is just make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Chain, I have my chain one in there and just right in the top of the turning chain. I just wanna put in a final double crochet to keep that balanced. So that's what it looks like at this point. So this is when the game plan is going to change and we're gonna start working I believe on the front post. Uh, do front post double crochet and this is what gives it the texture. So from here on in this is uh, this round number eight is going to always be always in this. So we're, the repeat pattern is already starting to emerge and this is the, the final one before we repeat the pattern once again. We're going to uh, chain five to start. So one, two, three, four, and five. And this is where we're gonna start doing front post uh, treble 
our front post double crochets. So in the first one of the eight you're just gonna double crochet into the front post. So come around into the post, pop it out the other side and just do a double crochet as normal and then you're going to do chain two. One and two and then you're going to the next one. So just into the next post and then chain two and then into the next post and you're doing this for all of the eight that you have available to you. Because it's lace work it's really easy to get your stitches into there. It doesn't uh, take any extra time at all to do this. And I'll show you what the results are on the other side because the, the good side is on the other side. And how do I know that? That's because where all the action is going to appear. Every time you're repeating the pattern this will always be on the same side. So chaining two and I wanna make sure I'm getting my eight in there so I don't count this first one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I still have one more to go. And then once I have that in there all I'm just going to do is just chain one. I'm going to half double into this gapping space and then I'm going to chain one and then repeat again what I already know is that I'm going to start way over here on these front posts right over here and I wanna make sure I get the right one in there. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this is the first one and I'm just gonna do a double crochet, chain two, these are front post double crochets once again. Chain two. Okay, and chain two. Chain two. Chain two. Okay. Chain two and I wanna make sure I get the, all of those in there so there should be a total of eight. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and I can tell I've got eight in there anyway because my ladder is coming up right down the center and then once you're at this particular point you're gonna chain two and then double crochet into the top of the ladder and chain two and then double crochet into the other side of the top ladder. So what's happening on here is that you've just created a lip that appears here and this becomes a really three dimensional design at this particular point. So let's do the other side. So we're gonna start off and chain two. So the other side of the ladder and these are your front posts right here. You're going to do eight of those and make sure you put a chain two in between each. Just like so. So the only difference in this pattern going forward is that you're adding more and more of these sprays that are in there but as I indicated right in the very beginning is that the gapping spaces that you start off with in the next row is what dictates how many more sprays will go into the next. So if there's two sprays in this particular uh, on this particular row here uh, next time we're gonna be able to create of three sprays. So we're looking at the center here so we don't count that one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and then to finish this one off here the eight we just chain one. We half double into the gapping space. That's between the sprays. Chain one and then we immediately start over here in the first one of the eight and just do front post double crochet. Chain two and keep doing that. So you can see that some of these rows are really labor intensive and others are really quite simple like this one. So you know some of the rows you're gonna be able to zip along pretty quickly and other rows that you just have to put in a little extra stitch work. Remember Rome wasn't built in a day so it's actually worth the extra time that you uh, you can put into this. This this shawl when it's done looks absolutely incredible. There's no mistaking that. So when you get all the way and you get all of them done I wanna check. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We're going to chain two, one and two and then just double crochet into the first turning chain there. 
like so. So this is, I'm gonna turn my work now but this is you can see the lip is happening and I'm going to show you the repeat pattern just once only on these gapping spaces because once you see the gapping spaces everything that you know that's happening from here on forward is just a repeat of this particular show. So let's begin row number 13. So here's your repeat pattern. You're going to chain 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And like what you did before is that remember back here is that we skipped over the first one here and we went to the second gap space. Well we're doing the same thing here. Just looks slightly different because of the raised lip of what we just did in the row below. But don't let that confuse you. We're going to half double crochet. We're skipping the first one going to the second. Half double crochet and then we're going to chain six. Want to know a secret? Everything is chaining six right to the ladder. So one, two, three, four, five and six. We skip the next gap space. Go to the second over for a half double crochet and then guess what? Chain six. One, two, three, four, five and six. Skip the next gapping space and then that's a half double and one, two, three, four, five and six. Skip the next uh, gap space so here's what is going to happen in between here these spaces. You don't wanna play in these spaces right here and, and you can see that this is where the sprays are coming together. So we're still gonna chain our six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and we just want to open these up okay and you want to be into this one over here. So do you see how it looks like this? There's got one here, here and here. We wanna start right here okay and we're going to half double crochet. Chain six, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, skip the next one. Okay, half double. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Skip the next gap space going over. Half double. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, skip in the next gapping space. And this is where I really wanna pay attention. You see that the ladder is coming up right here. So we're going one, two, three, four, five and six. So I have this gapping space before the ladder. I'm skipping that and I'm double crocheting right into the top of the ladder. Okay, so you now you created all these gapping spaces on this particular one. So to go over the ladder it's chaining two as always and then double crochet over top of the ladder. And then we're gonna start doing our chaining of six. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Skip in the first gapping space, go to the second for a half double and then one, two, three, four, five and six. Going to the next, skip the next gapping space right here. Go to the second over for a half. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Skip in the next gapping space. Go over the next and one, two, three, four, five and six. Okay, so here's the trick. Okay, so we gotta be able to pay attention is that we're coming to, we're skipping one, going into that one just at the end before it changes over to the middle section right here and we're chaining six still. One, two, three, four, five and six. Just paying attention at this middle section and we wanna go right here. Okay, so we're skipping this middle section. Do a half and one, two, three, four, five and six. Half and then one, two, three, four, five and six. So when we finish this uh, row, what's gonna happen is that you can just follow the remainder of the pattern. One, two, three, four, five and six and just simply being able to add in the extra fans as you need it as per the diagram and this is the final one. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then just double crochet in over here in the third chain up. 
Okay, so basically when we started this second uh, section we had the fan here then we then just followed the gapping spaces to create two more fans. So this time there will be a fan here, there's going to be a fan right in the middle and then there's gonna be a fan right over here at some point as well. So you just have to follow the diagram in order to make this work but you can see that this is actually turning out really quite uh, beautifully and it works out to be really amazing and if you can be able to pull this off it's absolutely just incredible. So good luck with that. Just grab your diagram, follow along and uh, you will see that the repeat pattern will make a lot of sense once you get a hold of it. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarnspirations as well as the Crochet Crowd.com. We'll see you.